Hi, I'm Rick. Welcome to the channel. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own vintage Spider-Man animation cell. Now the first step is to get yourself some reference. I went online and found this picture of Spider-Man. Uh, there was plenty to choose from, but this is the one I liked the best. I considered it to be the most iconic. It's important to point out that this is not how traditional animation cells would have been created. They would be painting onto the back of a sheet of either celluloid or cellulose acetate. I'll be using glass for this. I just prefer the way the glass looks. It doesn't have any uh, warping and doesn't give you uh, crazy reflections the way that acetate will. To apply the line work, I'm going to be using a Staedtler Marsmatic 700 technical pen. It's 0.45 millimeter diameter tip. Uh, that's what I find is typically the best for this sort of work. You refill the technical pen yourself with little bottles of India ink. While you can get disposable technical pens, you can't control what kind of ink is actually in them. There's many kinds of India ink for technical pens. Uh, it even comes in different colors, but importantly, the kind you need is acetate ink. It's the only kind that'll stick to the glass without beading and doing all kinds of weird stuff. Now to move on to the paint. I find Tester's model enamel to be the best. Uh, you're going to be painting on the back of the sheet of glass anyway, and I find that this stuff doesn't interact with the ink lines from the India ink. Another good feature is that it doesn't leave any apparent brush strokes. It's important though that you only use the gloss enamel. If you use a metallic, for example, or you use a matte color, it will actually give you a weird, uh, not very even coverage when you look at it from the front side of the glass. So I took that original reference material I got off the internet, I pulled it into Photoshop, and I took out all the other colors except the black line work. Then I flipped it. Uh, it's important to remember that you're going to be painting on the back of the glass in reverse, so whatever you're using to trace off of, you need to flip. I made this demonstration to show how the final product is going to be assembled. Uh, first you're going to have the frame, then you're going to add the outside glass, then the matting, then the actual cell glass, then the foam core spacer, and then the background image. You first start by taping the printout to the front of the glass. This way you can easily trace through it with the line work from the technical pen. Make sure the glass is perfectly clean before you do this. You can't really go back later and clean it. Now that's why I'm using sheets of paper uh, to rest my hand on and wearing a glove. I don't want any of the oils from my hands or any debris or anything to get onto the glass. Then I'd have to clean it later very, very carefully working around the line work and the paint work. I tend to start at one corner for this and then just work my way across to the other corner.
Now once all the line work's done, we can move on to filling in with the enamel paints. What color you want to start with is entirely up to you. I tend to do all of one color at a time and then move on to other colors. I started with the white here because the eyes are actually the only part that needs to be painted white. It's also important that you get a heavy enough coat. You really need to apply this stuff thick. You only want to do one coat because if you try to do a second coat, it might screw up the finish from the other side. Remember, you're going to be seeing this from the front and right now we're working in reverse on the back. I find it can be helpful to look for thin spots if you add a sheet of white paper underneath it. Uh, my desk happens to be gray, so uh, if you've already got a white tabletop, that should be fine, but you can see um, any little gaps between the paint and the line work or any little details by putting something brighter underneath it. You could also use a light box if you happen to have one of those. Now here I'm moving on to the final color, which is red. Luckily this cell only has three colors, so there's not really a, a lot of time in between colors. Uh, you do have to wait for the enamels to dry completely before you move on to the next color, because if you don't, there's a chance that one will bleed into the next. Now I'm only trying slightly to avoid the internal line work. I've never had issues with the enamel actually causing the acetate ink to sort of re-wet and then bleed into the paint, but you don't want to take any chances, so I prefer not to just, you know, glop it on and, and work the brush too hard over the existing ink lines for fear that it might mechanically abrade them or cause them to come up or chip or bleed in or something.
I've switched out to a much larger brush here. Uh, it just makes it easier to fill in larger spaces. And now we've moved on to the background. Here I'm just painting a piece of masonite with a white gesso and a very large background paintbrush. I tend to paint the first coat all in one direction and then I let it dry completely and then I paint in the opposite direction. Uh, this will give you a finish similar to rough canvas. If you really want something smooth you could spray apply or you could thin it out. Now some animation cell backgrounds are going to be more difficult to paint than others. Uh, they're going to require maybe airbrushing or some more advanced realistic techniques, but fortunately the 1960s animated Spider-Man TV series had pretty low standards. The studio that made this animation series also made the Rocket Robin Hood series. And you can actually see where they've reused animations from one series to the next and sort of reintroduced the same story so that they could reuse stuff. I'm just blocking in large areas here. Um, every time I go back and give it another coat, I'm adjusting the color slightly. The old 60s color palettes were very muted and toned down. They weren't too bright. I noticed the pink here is, is too bright, the blue's too bright, so I'm just making corrections as I go. By the time I get to the final coat of paint, it should be the color that I want, and you shouldn't be able to see any brush strokes or anything. It should just look like flat color. So I had a bit of a boo-boo. I actually dropped the piece uh, on the ground off camera and took a chip out of the corner. So I had to cut it out once I finished it and glued it to another piece of masonite. Now what I'm doing is adding foam core spacers all the way around. Uh, when you put the final animation cell over top, you don't want it to sit directly on the background. You want there to be a gap there. Number one, so that it doesn't wear the paint away or cause the paint to stick, but also so that you can see the cast shadow, so it looks like there's actual depth. Here I'm just doing the final assembly. Uh, now this frame I repurposed, it was off of something else. Um, and I actually ended up painting the front of it black. Animation cells, if you look at them, typically the frames are black. This one was originally like a golden oak color. And here I'm just pushing in these glazier points, uh, which are used to hold the artwork in place. 
they just push into the wood and, and capture everything. And then I'm going to use uh, four eyelets I've already got screwed in all the way around and then a metal braided line to uh, hang the painting on the wall. And here we're done. The final cell is ready to be hung. Now I just went with standard colors, uh, black frame, white matting is pretty classic for animation cells, but you could use any color you want. Thanks for watching.